Alrighty guys, we had a huge podcast filming today, but before we start our podcast, big shout out to our venue here, the Fresno Grizzlies, and our boy Julian right here at Fresno Grizzlies. Let them know why, Dan. Look, man, first of all, the Fresno Grizzlies, they will take care of you, especially if you go through my boy Julian, man. Um, they hooked us up with sweet tickets. We got to throw the first pitch, but you'll see that later on the, uh, on the pod, man. So shout out to Julian, shout out to the Fresno Grizzlies, man. They will take great care of you if you come and get one of their suites. Second tonight, man, right here in the Central Valley, but uh, we got a banger of a pod today. No better venue to have the podcast today. We got a big one, Mark Castro. Let's get into it. Alrighty, guys, welcome back to another episode of the Always His Podcast today. And uh, today, man, we got a huge, huge guest today. And uh, it hips even more special because he's right here from the Central Valley, right here in Fresno, California. And uh, his accolades, man, are second to none. Let him know why, Dan. Well, look, man, you're looking at, uh, uh, he really is already a boxing legend here locally, and um, he, he's making his way, man. He's making noise, and peop he's known nationwide at this point, man. So we got the boy, Mark Castro. Uh, he's putting on for the Valley, baby. Welcome to the show, man. Thank you. Thank you for having me, y'all. <laughs> and uh, before we get started, quick shout out to our sponsors today, Academy West Insurance, best insurance in the Valley. We got the auto, home, renter's insurance, pretty much everything from A to Z. Real, real quick, obviously, I mean, now everybody knows you're, you're a fucking superstar boxer, but, um, and we know a little bit of your backstory, man, but uh, there, I feel like there's still people that don't know exactly where Mark Castro came from, uh, exactly where he's from, man, what more parts of Fresno, how you grew up, and what you have to do to get to where you are now. Because obviously everybody sees, man, the, 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 the bright lights. Um, they see the big following, man. They see you out there, you know, at the Forza Regida yacht party <laughs> and all kinds of stuff, you know. But it wasn't always like that, right? Yeah. So w how did you get involved in boxing, bro? Where did it start? Um, just talk a little bit about your story real quick, man. Uh, my name is Mark Castro, born and raised in Fresno, California, southeast Fresno to be exact. And I've been boxing, being an athlete my whole life. And um, I just never stopped boxing. That's the, that's the difference. Um, my parents taught me like to give 110 percent in anything i do and i've always done that and things just paid off and um it's just amazing because i still see myself like in the most humble way like nobody yet i haven't done anything and um i just feel like i just want to be the role model that i needed growing up damn and uh, you know honestly dude that, that's crazy how you mentioned that man because i feel like um every because we've had a lot of like a uh, peak performers you know a lot of people that are doing big things in bases big things in sports and they all kind of keep that same mentality man like they feel like they're i don't want to say you feel like you're not enough yet but you feel like there's always like there's still like you still see yourself in a, in a, in a higher place than what you are right now it's like someone like to prove right like yeah. someone to prove for your future self like the goals you have set up are probably a lot more than anyone else could even set goals bro like you seem like you're the hardest on yourself yeah most definitely i'm the hardest on myself because i'm not on cable book but at the same time like how do you say it? I know what I'm capable of, but I know where I'm lacking or where I can pick up the slack and things like that. So, yeah, like, there's, like, goals that people don't even know. Like, you kind of, like, you don't share, you know, like, the crazy goals or things like that. Like, people don't hear about. Yeah, those are the goals, but you've you probably been writing down since you first started, right? Because I know you started boxing, just kind of do some research. You started with your dad in his gym, right? Like, at the age of five or something like that? Yes, he had his own boxing gym at the age of four. Well, I was there uh, before because... I think he opened up in 2000, I don't know what, what year, but he was a boxing coach already. Then when I was old enough, like, then I started putting on the boxing gloves and fight, start sparring with other kids. And start, we'll do sparring matches in front of people. And I just went in there, just did what my dad told me to, and, like, that's that's all I've ever done. Was there ever any pressure, bro, knowing that your dad was a boxer, he had his own gym, like, you were the son of a boxer? Was there ever any pressure to kind of come up along the way? Uh, no pressure, uh, because I feel like, if I wasn't good at this, I wouldn't be doing it. Uh, I think my dad would know that. Everybody else would know that. And it would be like, it would just be like second nature. Like, they know not to put him in a box if I was getting hurt and things like that. Mm -hmm. And honestly, like, in a alternate universe, I probably went to school. Like, I would probably go to, like, UCLA or UC Santa Barbara. I graduated uh, Valley Victorian. Mm -hmm. So, I'd rather, if I wasn't good at this, I wouldn't be doing it. Yeah. What, uh, part of school, bro, what, what do you think you would be pursuing? Like, Valley Victorian, like, people, if you guys don't know this at home, like, that's like the top of the top. Prestigious top of the class. Um, I went two years for Fresno State for kinesiology sports admin. So something, like, along the, the lines of, like, athletic director, sports director, something like that. Sports like, management type of thing? No, like, directing, like, a program. You know? mm. Like, maybe being the head of, I guess, like, USA Boxing or being the head of a whole... Like gotcha. like a program, a whole program. 
Like that's you, cool, man. So you, 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 like you'll hire the coaches, the trainers, the, the training staff. More like, like a GM yeah. kind of. Yeah. I guess, yeah. Okay. yeah. A GM, yeah. Damn, that's pretty cool, dude. So that's what you were going to school for? Yeah. And I did two years, but I just need yeah. to go return and do, do the rest of yeah. it. Yeah. And then you turn out to be good at boxing, so you're like, oh, yeah, I'll just, yeah, I'll just yeah. do boxing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, pretty <Dang>. much. <laughs> that's pretty cool, dude. So um, you started young. Uh, dad's gym. Uh, and obviously, you kind of just take off to a hot start when you were younger, right? Um, you started competing in tournaments. And um, there's one particular tournament, though, where uh, from what we what, what I've read is that you, you it kind of flipped a switch in you, right? Like you knew like you I think you went. What was that tournament? Um, it was in Russia, right? It was like a four month long tournament. And mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. 2015. First time going to international. And I went to Russia uh, representing USA. And it's kind of like everybody always told me, like the previous coaches that went out there that you're going to win, you're going to win. And all you have to do is like go fight you're gonna win but mm. somebody telling you that it's kind of like you don't believe it until it happens but you still have to put in the work in so it's kind of like someone tells you oh you're hard working like or you're smart you don't know like this is all you ever known mm. like you're smart you're smart but then you don't know you're smart until you see all the the landscape from your i guess your peers yeah until you until you kind of put yourself to the test and you compare yourself to like all the other people who are at the top of the game yeah so the first time going to russia it was uh I guess like so culture shock and going there, not knowing the language, um, going with like foreign coaches, like coaches that my dad didn't go with me. So going with coaches I've never been with and teammates and we had no training camp. So we just went out there. We just all met in Russia and as team US, as team USA. Uh, the, so you just flew individually, just commercially yeah. just flew out there yeah basically we like met in chicago and then from chicago to, oh, to st petersburg and from there it was pretty crazy because we just kind of got together feeding off each other's energy and like it's kind of like us us versus them you're ripping you're ripping yeah country, yeah the whole thing over there was kind of like they didn't they don't like americans like it's it's not, it's it's the norm, you know? Like, uh -huh. Wait, so, uh, not to cut you off, but yeah. when you say that, bro, like, are you talking about, like, you're at a McDonald's or, like, at a place, you know, and people, like, they're looking at you, like, kind of weird, like, just. Yeah, um, things like that, like, they don't treat the Americans the best or, really? like, kind of, like, they don't give you the best rooms or, like, for example, they didn't give us no training times to t to train at the bo boxing oh, gym. Oh, shoot. The f there was no fitness gym. Um so we'd work out in the hallways and work out in the hallways. Uh, we'd run up and down the hallways. And the, the hotel staff was like, no, you guys can't work out in the hallways. It was like sabotage. They were trying to sabotage. Yeah, bro, but that's you know a way. big tournament, sure bro. Like, to have a big tournament like that and you're working out in the hallways, you can't work out in the gym, you don't have bags, you don't have stuff like that. Like, that's it, a big difference, it bro. It was culture shot. And at the same time, like, they'll have, like, that you know how like little souvenir shops and like mm -hmm. you Donald Trump was president at this time you'll see like Donald Trump stuff like being like sold there like kind of like just showing him like he was just like fat overweight like a like lot making of fun of him basically yeah, yeah. making fun propaganda. of propaganda yeah. like propaganda yeah yeah the propaganda was crazy over there damn, damn that's crazy that's wild and it was just uh, the food was pretty bad I didn't like no food what there. kind of food they have well, I mean you're still pupusas like what Chile's and you go to oh. Russia and what yeah. does it have over there bro like they had like cereal but like the milk was really warm and it kind of mm. like was really bad so things like that i, I would eat, try to eat that and other than that i'll just wait till the kitchen opens and i order like i order like a salmon there but I, that was kind of like until like noon time oh so you had to wait basically yeah so uh like they kind of have like eggs and the egg looked like jello like uh. really like kind of like really white jello and it was just like it looked like it moved too much. Like. So it didn't even look like yeah. real egg. They were giving you guys like fake food too. Uh, no, it was kind of like a so catering. Fun. So we all, everybody ate there. All the athletes from all the countries ate there. And you just, and uh, USA was really inexperienced at the time. So like we don't know to what to expect. But as a country, we did well. Yeah. Well, you guys walked out, well, you walked out with the gold and a few other silver. So. Yeah, three silvers and I think two bronze. Damn, yeah. that's pretty good. So, so I think overall as a team, we were third place. We oh, as a team? Yeah, I think second place was Cuba and first place was Russia. Uh, I heard I Cubans are like the I heard Cuban are like the the slept on. They're like the it's like a uh, kind of like every sport you know has like like the Brazilians you know they're good at soccer, but I heard that Cubans that are like the 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 boxing is natural for them. Yeah, Cubans run amateur boxing like really intense, and that that's the crazy part because. It's the finals. Let's, let's put this in perspective. It's the finals, and my first teammate goes up there. He's fighting Romania, loses. 
mm. silver medal. Then my next teammate goes up there, fights a guy from Uzbekistan or India, loses. I'm up next. He's like, shit. I'm fighting Cuba. Ooh. And Just I, like the like states I was kind of like nervous, really nervous. And then one of the coaches I kind of knew, like we gave him chemistry and stuff. He's like, man, just go up there and whoop his butt and like go show him who who you are. Like, don't give him respect. Just go out there and win. And I actually won like really like lopsided, mm. which was pretty amazing to like the the whole tournament. And because of that performance, I got like the the boxer of the year. Whoa, for dang. that yeah. So so you're yeah. almost like then. So then your finals match, you're kind of like the underdog then because you're going against a Cuban guy. Uh, no training, just, not yeah. not the regular food. I don't got my my dad, my coach, and we got those coaches, but we not kinda, the same. Yeah, yeah. It's not the same. And it's an international scene. Um, just go out there, and I won, and I just I was just super happy because they told me like you feel it, you know you're winning. Yeah. And then once I've got the, once I won, I was like, damn, like it's finally over. Like, and after that tournament, they told us like they're looking at this team for the 2020 Olympics. And it kind of occurred to me, like, oh, damn, like, I'm kind of good at this. Like, I should keep doing this. And that's where a little bit, like, where I started believing myself mm -hmm. more and more over the time. Because, like, yeah, you, I would win nationals. Like, I would win nationals all the time. But then at the same time, like, it would kind of be like, oh, like, I won that one. But, like, I got to keep winning. Mm -hmm. Like, kind of, like, not an insecure feeling, but a, a feeling of, like, uh, I have to keep going. Yeah. Because if I don't win the next one, the one I won before don't matter. Exactly. Yeah. Damn, dude. So uh, you you okay, obviously you were in a hot streak, right? Um, and you you have you kind of have that chip on your shoulder where you gotta keep on almost kind of keep on proving yourself to the world, right? That you do belong in the big stages. And so it comes down to it. People are like they're scouting that for the Olympic team. Um, so what happened that? Because I know there's an interesting area between you going pro, between you going to the Olympics. It was a weird year too, because I think that was during COVID. Yes. So uh, how, how did that go down, dude? Um, the whole thing about it was. Uh, I was going to the tournament to compete for, it was called the last chance qualifier. Mm -hmm. So it was like, USA Boxing was always kind of like uh, changing the qualifying programs for the Olympic trials. So like I had to go to fight a tournament. Um, and I did that even though I was kind of like one of the most accomplished boxers in USA Boxing. So I kind of, I they didn't give me my Olympic trials, but I had to go earn it. Mm -hmm. And I was one fight. I had food poisoning probably the whole week. And I was, like, one fight away from, like, qualifying. Mm -hmm. And I would have beat the guy easy. Um, but my dad and me, like, we kind of made the decision to pull out. And it was kind of like I kind of had to, you know, like, my health came first. So I pulled out, and the whole thing was kind of up in the air. Like, I can't represent USA no more. Can't go to the Olympics. But I could go to the Olympics. I could have went represented Mexico if I wanted to. We were in the progress process of representing Mexico. Mm -hmm. Or representing El Salvador, mm. or I turned pro, so like I was just kind of like big choices. Yeah, it's kind of mm. like one day I wake up in the morning and I want to be a pro boxer. Yeah. Next day I wake up in the morning, I want to go represent Mexico. <laughs> <or El> Salvador, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I guess like you want to go stay stay another year in college, or you want to go to the pros. You know, it's kind of up to you. Like, and the best advice they gave me at the time was kind of like whatever decision you make, just own it. Mm. And that's what I did, and I decided to turn turn pro, and and I turned pro, and it was then probably like the next week, the whole I guess the world shut down with COVID mm -hmm. and like like this, like it was like February of 2020, oh, mm -hmm. and then everything was kind of shut down, and like there's no Olympics and nothing, and it was kind of like a good decision because going to the Olympics was not really going in a sense because it was the next year. Mm. And then the whole, like, the whole experience was kind of, like, I guess, handicapped at the same time. Yeah. And, and real quickly, uh, talk about, um, talk about because I think the Team USA, right, the qualifications was that one of the qualifications that the USA had for their boxers was that you couldn't be pro, right? So you have that, you kind of have that to take into consideration, right? But for the people at home, dude, that they don't really know, like, because people, like, I feel like a lot of people don't know, like, they think they, they see you in the Olympics and they're like, oh, he must be a pro, right? But business-wise, on the back end, there's a big difference, right, between saying amateur, competing for the Olympics, Team USA and stuff, or going pro, right? So what are the big differences? Because obviously you're weighing in those differences, right, as you make your decision. So what are, like, the big differences in, in, that, in that space there? Um, for being an amateur boxer, it's, it's up to the country. 
the country wants to let pro boxers be allowed that that's allowed now but usa has a rule where like no you no boxers could be professional mm. but they changed that rule because all the fighters that that were exempt to qualify so the olympic trial winners didn't go represent usa okay. they got like the whole qualifying process like from the aiba which was like the national the international federation mm -hmm. they had rankings and mm -hmm. then like the rankings of the boxers that were qualified for the olympics they a lot of people just got free passes to mm -hmm. represent team usa and a lot of them were i think like maybe like two or three of them were like pro boxers already mm -hmm. back in hindsight bro like you said it was especially with COVID. no one could have ever expected COVID or anything crazy that happened like that so looking back in hindsight bro like the decision you made really put you on the right path that you needed and like you said bro like God had his plans and God always has like a higher purpose. So you followed it. And that's, that's yeah, I feel like that's a big difference. Like of me and uh, like other fighters and stuff. Like I always like have like faith, like even though you can't see it or you don't feel it, like you just have like, you just believe in something like greater than you. And like, you know, things are going to work out for the better. How big is your faith, bro? Throughout your training camp? Uh, it's really big. Um, I really like kind of like read like scripture of like, kind of like letting you know how, like, God doesn't make mistakes. You're here for a reason and kind of, like, more, like, um, confidence. Not not cockiness, just, like, in confidence in a way of, like, not trying to, like, show cockiness. And, and that makes sense. You trust yeah. the hard work that you've been putting in, essentially. That yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, like you're not here for – you're here for a reason. Mm -hmm. Like, you are who you are and things happen for a reason. And God has you here. God don't make mistakes. a big thing. God I feel like it gives you peace that. knowing that, bro. Like – Knowing that you're not you're not going out there trying to impress someone, you're not going out there trying to create your own plan. Like, there's already a plan written for you, bro. Like, you're you're following the plan that God has mm -hmm. made for you. So yeah, most definitely, and like doing things like wholeheartedly and stuff, mm -hmm. wholeheartedly and stuff. Yeah, hundred percent, bro. And after that, bro. So I know fast forward past the Olympics. Um, obviously, there's probably a lot of people that are reaching out to you, right? Like as far as promotions and different people in the pro scene, right? So I know right now currently you're with Eddie Hearn in, in Matchroom Boxing. So yeah. what made you choose Matchroom Boxing, Eddie Hearn? Um, choosing Eddie Hearn and Matchroom Boxing, I always felt like they were the future, the zone. And I actually, I did I did go with Eddie Hearn and Matchroom because the whole thing was make me a global star. Um, and eventually, like, I had a pro debut scheduled, I think, eight, it was, it was going to be May 20, May 2020 on the Canelo undercard. And everything got shut down because of COVID. So fast forward, my pro debut was going to be in August, and I had got COVID, mm. so Dang. it was kind of like a bummer. Yeah. So fast forward, my pro debut eventually happened. Pro debut was December 19th, 2020, on a Canelo undercard as a co-main event, Dang. which is kind of like unheard of, like being co-main event for your pro debut. And that's, that's, yeah, that's, it kind of like crazy. came back full circle. Yeah. Because like knowing my first fight could have been on Canelo undercard and then my other pro debut got postponed which was because of COVID mm -hmm. and now to my pro debut being in front of fans during COVID at the Alamo Dome in San Antonio and I got the win I think it was like a third round knockout mm -hmm. yeah that's kind of shows bro. that faith too like that plan where like you wanted that first one you wanted that second one but god's plan for you was a lot bigger at a bigger stage you know what i mean so yeah most definitely and it's really kind of like like god god like kind of like lets you like you think you you know like you think you can you have things figured out but like god's kind of like all right i'm gonna show you i got even more planned for you yeah like you, even think, better like you can't for even you. imagine <laughs> what i got planned for yeah you, like you can't predict it 100 yeah, percent. and then me wholeheartedly like knowing like, you know how you said those goals, the little things, the little goals I talked about that nobody knows. I always wanted to fight in December just to, like, I don't know, just win. Mm -hmm. Just December. That, that, was your, that was your month. Yeah, and I always wanted to fight on a Canelo in the card. But when I signed, Canelo wasn't with Eddie Hearn. It, it, right, because a lot of yeah. people, I feel like a lot of people here at Matchroom, and they think Canelo, but it didn't start off like that. Yeah, it was at Golden Boy. Mm. But then I always find it, wanted to fight it as a co-main event, and I was, uh, got to be under Canelo. And in December, and which was amazing because checks like, all the boxes. Dude, that's <laughs> crazy. <laughs> like that goes back to like the faith thing. Like God knows your heart. God mm -hmm. knows what you really want, and that's where like He rewards your faithfulness. And that's why I've kind of like, kind of like, all right, like it's okay to be faithful to God. Amen. Yeah. 
Even when you don't think, <laughs> even when you don't think it's gonna happen, like you said, twice in a row, and that third time's way bigger. That's crazy. That lets you know too, like just having that blind faith to it, it will always lead you in the right direction. Yeah, and it kind of goes back to the whole thing of think about it. It's 2020. There's no Olympics yet, and you're kind of like, damn, like I, I kind of made the right decision. Uh -huh. so, yeah, so circle yeah. back around completely. Yeah, but at the cool. same time, like it's kind of like making the right decision, but like at the same time, this was God's decision. Like mm -hmm. God had this plan for me. Like. Mm -hmm anything else i would have done like, and it's been there bro that's the crazy yeah. part it's been there long before you sign long mm -hmm. before you turn pro like like how all those events play out uh i think canelo had a lawsuit with like golden boy he got out of his contract like you couldn't really tell like he was gonna go fight yeah at another promoter signed another promoter because all lawsuits can take years mm -hmm. But he got out of the contract in less than a month. And Damn. Right? <laughs> I think it was a three-week notice. It's crazy, though, because you went pro, what, the December previous to your pro debut, no? Or when did you when did you officially go pro? Like, when did you decide to go pro? Uh, February 2020. February 2020. And then the fight was December. December 2020. So I, th I remember it was like, it was, it was Thanksgiving 2020. And they kind of told us, like, you could have the opportunity to be on the Canelo undercard. <laughs> I didn't eat Thanksgiving. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> too high. I was like, too nah, high to I'm not going to eat Thanksgiving. I didn't eat. And I'm like, <laughs> Collecting I gotta, some miles, yeah. I got to get ready for my fight because it was a three week notice for everybody. Oh, wow. Oh, sh so so they, that cuts in. Yeah. That's, that so cuts. we just so threw right? the food away. Yeah. I don't need this. Yeah. I was like, all right. Like, nah, like, we're going to do it. We're going to do the pro debut. Yeah. So that's skip forward great, to bro. the pro debut, bro. So you're on the Canelo undercard. What's going through your head, bro? As you're walking out the tunnel, you're coming out. What's going through your head? They actually told me uh, after seeing my fight outfit. Eddie Hearn really liked it, so they're like, "We're gonna put you co-main event," and I was like, "Like to me, it's like, all right, like it, I'm, it don't hit me yet." Then eventually that night, I think that night, no, the next day, yeah. yeah. So I was ready, like getting ready, mm -hmm. wide ready to walk out, and like everybody's telling me, like, "Relax, relax," but you know, like, all right, sorry, like, all right, like. What does that mean? But like, I get out there. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> yeah, I get out there and you just feel like I've never felt adrenaline rush, and I felt the adrenaline rush, and it was pretty amazing. From the energy from the crowd, and yeah, everything, like or just everybody was just screaming, like just yelling and screaming, and then I just like felt a, a sense of high, and just go out there and like I was just like super happy, and then I get in the ring and just like the first round was kind of like I don't want to say it's not my best round, but like you could tell like I looked like really like trigger happy in there. But then second round, I kind of calmed settled down. Settled in a little bit. And then third round, I got him out of there, which is amazing. And then I was kind of like, yeah, like I felt the adrenaline rush like the whole time up there. And it just feels like a, a crazy dream, crazy experience for now. Because a lot of people remember that night, like they didn't expect me to be co-main event. And it kind of like shocked everybody. And the way it happened, because a lot of I had a lot of fans waiting for the pro debut mm -hmm. since I signed in yeah, February, February and then the postponement in August. So h how did you look with the co-main event, bro? Because right now I think you said you said that Eddie Hearns was like, I I like your outfit, bro. You're, you're co-main event now. Or how, how did that go down? Did you already know you're gonna be the co-main event, or was that like a last-minute thing? It was like uh, they always decide the card the day before, mm. but like it's kind of like just unheard of. And at the same time, like he just put me a pro debut because it's kind of like uh, Mexican American Mexican American Salvadorian kid. Like let's put yeah. him on the pro debut with uh, Canelo. Like yeah, like. He's gonna be a that, he's gonna be a star one day. Like he deserves it. Yeah, it's so crazy, yeah. bro. Cause it's like the whole story, man. Like if you kind of like <laughs> rewind it, yeah. it's like everything aligned, bro. Everything aligned so perfectly. Even though at the time, I'm sure, like, cause I'm sure when the first fight got postponed, it was kind of like, oh shit, man. You know, you're kind of ready to get your hopes up. And then again, that happens for the second time. And again, you know, I can imagine like, all right, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready. And then again, it gets postponed, man. Uh, but like Nate said, man, and like you said, you know, it's just that blind faith, uh, blind faith, where you know where it doesn't matter what's happening right now, whether it's bad. We're good. Uh, you know, long term, man. Uh, you know, God's got your back, man, and it's all part of the process. Yeah, there's, there was nothing I really could do. Like even if I tried, like just think about it. Like the way I always like kind of explain, do things wholeheartedly. Once you do things wholeheartedly, like God will reward you. Mm. Like no matter what you do. Like if you're acting out of anger, or, like madness, like God will bring you back to earth. Mm. So real quick, bro, before before we move on. I want to kind of touch a little bit more on that um, your pro debut. So you were supposed to have a pro debut, and just talking a little bit off camera, you were talking about how COVID really affected that pro debut. Take us through that story, bro. And and I understand you were actually over there in Oklahoma for your pro, your pro debut, and then you got a test and some stuff happened. Yeah. So first, like like backtrack all the way back before we even left to um, to Oklahoma. 
my dad had got a negative test and it was kind of like oh he can't go with you like i was kind of like i need to go alone i need to go alone so the whole thing was kind of um like up in the air but then we got a rapid test and the rapid test my dad was cleared to get on the flight we got on the flight and we get there and they tell me i got covid and this whole time i, I cannot see my dad i can't see the, my dad and even though we're like on the same floor i had to work out alone and it was probably like two two days before my fight i was on weight everything was good and just a doctor comes to my room and he's kind of like you have you tested positive for covid and i kind of like got really upset because I asked for my negative test or my, my positive test mm -hmm. and they didn't give me it. They didn't show me no proof. And it is what it is. But then I just felt like it was a greater plan than me. And they told me my dad has a COVID as well. So I just kind of like, all right, then it's not meant to be. My pro debut is not going to happen. But then the next day I was kind of like, I, I, I thought we were going to be able to get on a flight. We couldn't get on a flight. I was like, can you guys wait till I get home? Wait till I get back to Fresno? and announced it that i won't be fighting and they kind of said they didn't answer me they just kind of posted it like nah and they're like we have to post it we're sorry like we have to let everybody know that you, you guys tested positive because this is serious and i was like all right so we had to drive 30 hours while well, my dad drove the okay. whole time 30 hours from oklahoma to fresno and i think we we got there like maybe friday night and it was kind of like in a sense of like Next morning, we got a rapid test. We, we we came out negative, and the whole thing was kind of like we showed them we test negative, but there was kind of like the whole time we're like rapid tests were kind of like they were just like they're invalid. Yeah, they they're were not the best. At that time, huh? It was like yeah. hit or miss. Like some tests were positive, some were negative. Yeah, even the COVID results, bro. Like I feel like some people you can take the exact you can have two tests side by side. Take one that's positive, one that's negative. Like those, I feel like same person, same nostril, everything. Everything, bro. Yeah, it was really, they weren't yeah, as accurate. Weird time. Yeah, it was. It was pretty insane. Uh, and it's kind of like the whole thing about like the having the faith. I just didn't understand. You kind of fall into like a, a sense of like, like a depression where it's kind of like, like what does this mean? Like I really worked all my all hard like to see nothing pay off. Because mm -hmm. that was you already went through the entire camp, right? Like, so you went through the camp. You're about to go, and then it wasn't like you found out before and. Yeah. yeah, and it was kind of like I was there already. I was on weight, and it was kind of like not mentally challenging, but at the same time, like spiritually challenging because it's kind of like I made weight. I thought I did everything right, and I'm here. I'm here to fight. I'm ready, and it's kind of like out of control. Yeah, you did everything happen. you could, Damn. and it was pretty insane because uh, fast forward, I had my fight, my first fight, which was in uh, December. Then my second fight, I was going to get the same opponent I was going to have for my pro debut. So it's mm. February now. It's February 2021. I was going to fight him in Miami, Canelo undercard. And the crazy part is, is he tests positive for COVID. Damn. Mm. So, like, it's kind of <laughs> like, damn, like, we can't, like, we this fight's never going to happen. Yeah. So they kind of had to fly in a, a guy, get a guy, like, uh, like a, he was like a, he was in the UFC for about, I don't know how long, but he fought for the world title. He lost to Mighty Mouse Johnson. Oh, okay. And so he's kind of like had some experience in, in boxing. So we got him. He had he had fought another prospect, but he had never been KO'd. So that's why we got him. And I ended up, it was pretty funny. I actually hit him with the first punch and with a jab, and he kind of like, yeah, I don't want to, he, woke up a little he <laughs> got it. I dropped him with the first punch, Oh, which is crazy. And he gets up. I think the second round, I ended up finishing him. He kept getting up. He wanted to continue, but the ref didn't let him. But the ref started to protect us. And that just kind of insane because I never fought the guy again. Well, I, I, the guy was scheduled to fight two times. Like, it fell out oh, twice. Yeah. Which is never meant to be. That's yeah, crazy, though, too, bro, because usually UFC fighters, I've heard, like, whenever they transition to boxing, the main thing they have is they have a chin. Like, they're used to just getting the shit knocked out of them. And then yeah. whenever that happens, like. Yeah. And, <laughs> like, it just goes to this. I don't want to, like. It's like two different sports. Mm -hmm. Like I'm not here to disrespect no UFC fighter because I would never step in the, the cage. But like when they like kind of like like cross the line and try to step into boxing, like there there's like there's like a fine line between boxers and uh, clear UFC difference. Fighter. Huh? Yeah, like you mm -hmm. can tell they can't keep up with like all the nuances. Yeah, and, and it's kind of like we can't keep up. Boxers can't keep up on the ground game or like the stamina or like I think like. I get hit on my knee or some or my knee or something like I'll probably be like, <laughs> He's like, handicapped for like, <laughs> He's like don't touch my shins, <laughs> man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like 
I can't deal with all that mm-hmm. MMA stuff. Just the apples and oranges kind of thing, too. Yeah, it's kind of like, oh, that's a different sport than boxing. Like, we might do the same things, but it's not the same. Because I know even when yeah. they are, like, known for boxing, it's, it's not the same. Like, they'll train with boxers and stuff, but they can't really, like, fight against a yeah, boxer. Yeah, kind of like, boxing match. I guess, like, Nate Diaz fighting Jake Paul. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's August like, 5th, I think. Wait, what's your prediction on that? You got Jake Paul or you got Nate Diaz? I think Jake Paul. Like, even though Nate Diaz is going to stay in there and, like, He's going to eat some punches. Like, I don't sure. think he's going to get knocked out. Nate Diaz is going to, like, put on a show. Like, it's going to be really entertaining. But at the same time, Jake Paul, like, I I think the narrative is, like, Jake, what is it? Nate Diaz has a chin. So I think Jake Paul kind of, like, he's wants to knock him it. out. Yeah. yeah, he's going to go for that KO. 100%. <laughs> yeah, so that's the whole thing. Like, I think Jake Paul really wants to, like, prove himself from losing. I think he lost the, to Tommy Fury's last fight. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like. That bounce back. He needs to hit us. Yeah, Do you like think some of his fights are set up though with some of these fighters. Um, nah, I don't think so. You think they're just all pure? No, nah, I think he's actually training. He's actually like really training, but because he's fighting, first fight was Nate Nate Robinson, <laughs> basketball basketball player, <laughs> <Bro>. <laughs> Nate Rob- basketball player. Second, second fight, I don't know who it was. I, it was a, it was a UFC fighter. It was too, an old I think. UFC guy. Um, but uh, yeah, he fought Ben Askren. Ben Askren. Right? Yeah, yeah. That's That's who was. but he's been improving so. He and he's been improving. stepping up in competition. He hasn't been getting better, too. Like, his skills are a lot better. You can see it, too. He just hired a pro coach, too. You know, who, who did he recently hire? <laughs> he just brought him on camp. Mm, he's a, he he was a former boxing Shane cha- Mosley? Yeah. Yeah, there yeah, you go. yeah, yeah, yeah. Sugar Shane? Yeah. He Sugar, Sugar Shane? Shane? Damn, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's pretty tight because, like, That's dope. Jake Paul's, like, a YouTuber. Like, he's a, yeah, like, <laughs> he's, like, globally known for, like, all his stuff, not in boxing. But then he crossed over to boxing and... It's kind of insane because he's media. bringing a whole nother world to boxing. Mm-hmm. I, I feel like he's hyped it up a lot too. Like, do you do you like that he's bringing in a lot of that attention to the sport? Yeah, it's kind of like it's good. Like any attention to the sport is good. Mm-hmm. Um, but because like if I look bad, like people look bad, like trying to be bitter and about it, talking bad. Mm, I agree. Yeah. Like it kind of just shows like he come in here and he entertains. How can he come into boxing and entertain boxers more than boxers? So it's kind of mm-hmm. like it's our fault as boxers, but like you kind of just have to like roll with it, you know. Like he's out here doing his thing, like you can't hate on it. That's true. He's bringing a lot of attention. Not like honestly, if you think about it, he's selling out these pay per views every single time. So I think, I think yeah. they're like a million dollar gate, one point five. With Fury, right? That was a big with one. Fury. No, no, Anderson Silva. Mm. Oh, I forgot about the yeah. Anderson Silva one. Damn. Was that before Damn. Tommy Fury? I, I know I think that was a little bit before. I think yeah. so. Yeah. One point five million, and mm-hmm. then like that goes. Um, to bring that in, into perspective, I think Tank his last fight, well, before Ryan Garcia was five million gate. So m- being able to like have gates like that is like like it's unheard huge. of. Like he's yeah. pulling numbers, yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. Like there's only like probably Canelo, Tyson Fury, Anthony Joshua, probably like a handful of fighters. That the can big do big that. names. Yeah. So yeah. you think it's good for the sport overall then that he is, is bringing it, that type of attention? Well, it's business. Like if they're bringing money in, like no one's gonna like stop him. Like he lost mm-hmm. his last fight and he's still got paid. top. No, still on, still on top right. of the game. Like people still want to watch him fight. That's cool. I watch on TikTok Live, right? Just pull a TikTok Live. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're outing, you're outing <laughs> our sources. <laughs> so one thing I want to bring up too, since talk about celebrities and your celebrity here, you have an open yeah. mat this Saturday for the kids. Is it this week or do you have like an open gym coming up soon? Okay, so we the whole thing like we, I would work out like kind of like the last workouts. Okay. So the last workouts would kind of get boring, where it's kind of like the gym was empty. Mm-hmm. Like I was trained by myself. Then we started inviting like um, my um, like musicians to play like live like music, and then eventually it turned into like we started inviting like close family friends, and then eventually like kind of decided like hey dad let's let's just post it on social media like have people come get autographs watch we train watch these more, and they come check it out, and and it kind of like blossomed into something nice and then. It came to the thing where, like, we didn't want to sell food. Well, I'm like, Dad, let's just give the food away. Okay, that's what I heard, too. Yeah, like, you guys supply food, drinks. Yeah, food, drinks, where it's kind of like, I'm not here to try to make money off them right now. Like you said earlier, yeah. too, you want to be, like, the um, that mentor you said that you wish that you had as a kid. Yeah, and then, like, it's it. And then the kids, like, being able to see me, like, work out, spar, and, like, see that, like, it's it's like a grind. Like, I'm not. I didn't show up like I just didn't show up. Not luck, yeah. Yeah, like I just didn't like, like boom, like I got all these skills out of nowhere. Like no, I had to put in work, I had to spar, I had to do things to get here. And 
us doing that like after like i just signed autographs talk to the kids like and then kids bring like photos or we, we we have posters there to sign and just the whole thing is just like an experience for everybody that's what i heard and i heard you yeah. sign pretty much everybody's stuff you take pictures of everybody you don't exclude anybody like it's really cool seeing like a celebrity on that level here giving back to the community you know what i mean and keeping it humble and giving back to the kids like yeah. to me that's what it's about that's super important yeah i feel like it gives that hometown pride too bro where like later down the road whenever they see you on, on the big screen bro like you know your upcoming fight i feel like it gives them that sense of pride to know like hey he's from here too and it almost gives like even for us too bro like knowing that you're here from fresno you're here from the central valley it inspires us too bro like we're just a small town podcast or all the stuff the business stuff we got going on with academy west yeah. like we're here from the valley too bro and just where knowing you, where you guys from I'm from Visalia. Visalia, you? Yeah. I'm from Mexico, but I grew up here in, in <laughs> Fresno. <laughs> Where are you from? Tulare. <laughs> Tulare. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to ask y'all some questions. Let's so do it. All, Let's do it. All A's, yeah, like it. All A's podcast? Uh -huh. What is that? What, what do you guys come up with that? So All A's yeah. podcast, bro, is like, so for us, we were thinking about the name. We were thinking about people we want to have on, right? So like yeah. you were on the list. Like we had a lot of the people on the list. And we wanted to bring like the ace of like every industry. So yeah. All A's is like here, every guest that we have here on the podcast they're all aces. They're I was thinking like industry. like spades. What is it called? Like oh, diamonds. Oh, oh yeah, clubs, like, yeah. <laughs> that's something too, like that. Yeah, that's, too, yeah. that's, that's too, yeah. Too, yeah. That's what I was thinking. I was like, yeah. I'm gonna ask them that question. I just don't <laughs> yeah. know. Yeah. So for like you, bro, you're like the ace of boxing, right? You're like, you're the yeah. ace. You're pe pe you're peaking and you're, you're you're continuing to rise in, in the in the industry. Mm -hmm. So it's cool for people to see. They know every time they tune into an episode, they're gonna hear an ace of of business. We we had Matt on here. He's an ace of business and real estate. You know, we have you on here boxing. And yeah. kind of continue to have the ace of every industry. It's a good name, yeah. Hell yeah, yeah I like <laughs> it. Like it had me wondering, yeah, <laughs> okay. for sure. Speaking of ace, yeah, that's a good question. Though. I bet you a lot of people have that question though. So yeah, that, that yeah. Answer it. Bro, that's cool. the first time someone's ever asked us a question. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. But speaking of ace though, <laughs> yeah, you're pretty good with social media too. Like I know that you have people send you clips and then you make your own social media. Is that a grind in itself? Trying to keep up on that and trying to constantly post. Yeah, um, social media is like I feel like it's an art, but like. You just have to learn how to present things to people. Like, it's kind of like a lot of things are hit and miss. And at the same time, you don't know what's going to go viral. Some things go viral. I could work on a clip for like five minutes. It could probably get a million views. I could work on a clip for like an hour and it probably get like like 40K views. So it's <laughs> kinda, why, why is it like this? Like, it's kind of like hit and a miss and mm -hmm. you just don't know. But uh, over time, you kind of just learn the like the algorithm you study. I studied it. And what your audience kind of wants. The whole thing was I had a sports agent that from the UK, and he kind of told me, get on TikTok. Be one of the first boxers to get on TikTok. And it's kind of like, what the hell do I do on TikTok? <laughs> like, it was like 2019. And I'm like. Oh, that's TikTok was that was pre, pre, pre TikTok. I didn't know. I was just doing dances yeah. and shit back then. <laughs> yeah, I was like, he's like, just post boxing stuff. And I just kind of didn't know. And I started like just posting like here and there wouldn't blow up wouldn't blow up and then eventually i think the first video that blew up was probably like may 2020 it was like a head moving boxing video and mm -hmm. it got posted on house highlights okay, it got posted yeah. on bleacher report yeah. um yeah pretty yeah bleacher reports and house highlights and it kind of like oh shoot like I those are the biggest. Those are the biggest yeah. platforms. Yeah, yeah, those are literally. Yeah, you get posted on that. Yeah, and I got like about like 30k followers overnight. Whoa. Overnight? Yeah, yeah. Damn. Because I'm following yeah. so big on those pages too. Like that cosine is crazy. And it, was, it was pretty K? amazing. And then I think on TikTok right now I'm probably like 10k away from a million. Damn. Yeah. I seen yeah. that. Yeah, you were getting pretty close to that. that soon, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's. I thought you hit one million already. I don't know. I watching. thought I, I hit it too, watch. but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we tried that. <laughs> but like, if you're watching this at home, let's get up to a mil. <laughs> I need to get back on the grind. So but I have a question too. So, okay. 10 and 0 with six knockouts. Would you say you're a knockout specialist? 10 and 0, seven knockouts. Seven knockouts. Yeah, I had to come straight. Nate, you're going to get us in bro, trouble, trouble with your point. research. Fuck, oh my dude, gosh. Where are you getting your stats from, bro? We're doing so good, bro. We're doing so good. Point. So, would you call You're basically a knockout specialist at this point. 70%. Do you yeah. feel like going in, like, I'm most likely going to get a knockout? Or how do you feel about it? No, you don't. Uh, you have to work for it. Do like, it, no, you don't feel like you're going to knock this guy. Like, everybody's tough. You kind of have to work for it. You kind of have, like, kind of like a chess match. Mm. Kind of have to, like, disguise things. Like, can't show them your attentions. And, like. But when you get that knockout, though, how does it feel? Um, it feels amazing. The first time I actually, like, knocked someone out cold was last year. And my dad always tell me, like, you got power, you're going to knock people out, like cold, like put them to sleep. Like usually it'll be like a, the ref stops it or like 
they don't get up for the count but like i actually put this guy to sleep who's done that's crazy. um i remember like it was like it was in vegas t-mobile arena the canelo undercard Ooh. versus triple g third fight damn and it was like the fifth round i think and all i heard was like throw the uppercut and that and he threw the jab and i slipped really late and i just mm-hmm. threw the uppercut i didn't see the punch and i threw it and i i hit something i hit his chin <laughs> i didn't see I nothing <laughs> and he just i just felt like him headbutt me like on the way down and i seen like his body just i just felt his body just collapsed just no, nothing in there huh? yeah it just collapsed and then i was just in i was like oh shoot and i just started smiling <laughs> and then i was like it's over it's so, over yeah and i just like i you probably seen the video i just go yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then it was probably um and i just get on the ropes get on the ropes start celebrating and then eddie hearn tells me like get off the ropes like don't celebrate he's not waking up oh uh, and i was like it. i was like damn okay so <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> you're all, it's like dunking on somebody yeah so like if you see the video you probably see me like look over and like he's telling me and i just jump off and then then eventually like i think he gets up like maybe like 10 minutes after damn yeah. and they were kind of they were kind of like scared it's so he was napping though, basically yeah. yeah it was pretty insane uh after that happened it just kind of like changed my whole perspective like training and stuff and there's actually pr- like film of us like working on the uppercut like the last week of training and it was pretty amazing because i kind of like put the clips together and then like like showed the angle of us training and then like mm. it just like goes the next clip will be us like the knockout how deep in the fight so. do you really pick up on their tendencies usually um on the fight it's kind of like second nature like you kind of like he's 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 dropping his hand you just need to hit him right there mm. but at the same time you just kind of have to be aware like maybe they're setting you up because maybe they're doing it on purpose to get mm. you yeah. into it and that's like the the, the art of it it's comes like in, the, huh? yeah the, the chest to the counter yeah it's kind of like all right like i'm disguising something but like it's kind of like making a mistake so like you think you're doing like something right yeah like i'm gonna bait you into doing something but how then often I, do you do that to people um i don't, honestly don't do it like i don't really think about it but i probably do it a lot where i kind of like i guess like fake one way Show go the other way other, yeah. mm, got you or like kind of like you could throw a soft punch and the next one could be super hard like kind of just like change it up like there's a lot of things you could do in boxing or like whether it's gonna be like stepping on their foot or like holding and hitting the or like little things huh yeah it's just like it's just so super small like little major things that you think can make a difference, they could, they can make a difference. So it's like fundamentals, basically, too, huh? Just knowing the fundamentals and sticking to them, too. Uh, yeah, I, but at the same time, kind of knowing the game and like knowing like, like the ref, the ref could be like stop, or like the ref could be like fight out. Like if you're in a clinch, mm-hmm. so it's kind of like knowing the ref, like knowing what he'll let you get away with, like not to get away with, but like it was actually the fight that I got knocked, that I got the knockout in, uh-huh. that fight I was talking about. That guy hit me in the back of my, I think hit me low. Low or in the back of my, no, he actually hit me low. And the ref didn't say nothing. And I hit him low back right away. So you knew, you're like, all right, let this go <laughs> and then, then. like, the ref was like, <laughs> like, because he actually see me, he hit me low, and I looked at the ref, and the ref didn't say nothing. Then I hit him low back right away, and the ref's kind of like, oh, shit. Hey, I, I can't hear even say anything <laughs> about it. Let's yeah, play he, ball. He yeah. tried to, like, tell me something, but it's like, hey, like, you, you, you didn't say nothing to him like well, mm-hmm. i just yeah. i just evened it out you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> what does it mean to have your dad as a trainer he knows how to push me he knows what drives me so like the whole time like he knows what i'm capable of and at the same time he just he's at, at home with me like he's with me 24 7 he he knows like what he has to do to like get me to to the to the next level and also get that extra push out of me yeah, dude, that, yeah. that's so that's so that's so money, bro. Because I feel like sometimes, uh, especially like in the boxing world, other sports, sometimes like having like I feel like sometimes that that's on combos. Like people have like I feel like they associate a negative connotation. But obviously, from your experience, man, you've had like nothing but success. And um, it's funny because like as we've got to know you guys, man, you guys are like it's such a it's so fun to put it's such a badass duo, bro. Like, it's a cool duo, really yeah. Are, <laughs> you guys really do have like good chemistry, man. So uh, that that's badass, man. Yeah, it's pretty amazing because like there's a lot of like. I guess like non cue like non verbal communication where like you kinda like sense it. You just I, know. I remember one time I was kinda like it was like after a fight and I was kinda like I was feeling something that kinda hurt me and I don't know how to like communicate that to my dad. Mm. 
but like i knew how to communicate to him so i just like grabbed him and i i I legit like grabbed that part of my body that was hurting and i squeezed it and he knew like he just knew like that was hurting and it's pretty amazing because it's like damn been working together like, yeah. since birth, bro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Since birth. It's hard to beat. Yeah, it's kind of like I, I let him know, like, I'm hurt, and he kind of figured it out yeah. after, like, I did it to him. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good story. That is true. You've been working that's together since birth, bro. Yeah, he, yeah. he probably does. Mm-hmm. That's true, though. He does know you better than It's like your parents. You're, like, I know my mom sometimes, like, she'll just call me out of the blue, and I'll pick up, and she's like, hey, what's up? How you doing? You know, are you, are you okay? And I'm like. You're like, what's, what's going on? How did like, you, you even know? I couldn't even tell you. It's that mother instinct, bro. Yeah, can sense it on us. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's pretty amazing. One of the things I want to talk about is, bro, your mindset as far as when you did get knocked down, when when things don't go your right way, right? So mm-hmm. I know there was a fight, right, re- pretty recently mm-hmm. where you did get knocked mm-hmm. down, and I know the entire world make a, made a big deal about it. They made clips, and and I know in that moment it probably seemed like, what are you gonna do next? So what was going through your mind at that point when you got knocked down, and and how did you get back up and finish the fight? I was like, oh shit, like uh, this shit just got real, and I got up. It just felt like if. Y'all never been, like, knocked down like that. Like, it just felt like someone cracked my neck. Mm-hmm. And I just, like, cracked my neck. I seen the lights above me. And you know how you sit down and, like, someone pulls a chair from you? Like, that's exactly what it felt like. And I kind of, like, messed up my leg on the way down. Mm-hmm. So I basically got up, and I was like, oh, shoot. And this kind of, like, go through, like, my dad. I look to the corner. I see everybody but my dad. And which is pretty like crazy. Like I don't know if like I zoned out and stuff. I did not see my dad. I did not hear my dad. Like I just heard everybody else. So at the same time, like I got up and I was like, oh shoot! Like I start fighting again. Like kind of like instinct. And I got hit again. Um, and I kind of felt wobbly. And then like we started fighting. And then I just grabbed them. And I just kind of like all right, like lose the round, recover myself. And then kind of like I recovered myself. Got to the corner. My dad kind of like. Started pep talking me. He's like, all right, like, you got this. Like, take your time. Like, we got we got time. Like, recover. Like, once you're ready, start, like, going. And there was, like, a, probably a clip where, like, I had to throw, like, eight punches, like, in, like, three or four or four seconds. And uh, you, you guys probably could show the clip. I just like, yeah. was the next round, probably, like, 30 seconds in. And the whole time, like, I was, I was really – kind of like upset like i want to get get him back knock him out mm. when my dad's like i'll get to the corner and he'll be like nah like you're not gonna knock this guy out like chill like like you just gotta win the rounds like that's all that matters now like, it's almost like you taste that point where you taste your own blood right where you're like you taste your blood mm. you wake up and you're like it, pr- it pisses yeah. you off even more bro you want to go after yeah him. you want to get him back and which is like him he dropped me i want to drop him again or like stop him knock him out mm. but like i can't that's not the game plan. You play smart. Like the game plan is to like win the fight. And that's like discipline yeah. kind of comes in for it too, huh? You yeah. You can't get away from the strategy. Yeah. Because of how you feel. Because it was a six round fight. Oh, okay. So like I got dropped in the second round, and when you get dropped, you lose. Uh, you lose a round, and you lose two rounds. Mm. So like I'm down two. It was probably I'm down two one going into the third. So I'm going into the fourth. That was two two now. Because that was the first time you ever got knocked down in in your career, like a professional career, yeah. right? Yeah, uh, probably ever. Yeah, it was ever. And how did you regain that confidence after such a big moment, bro? Um, it kind of like m- me and my dad have talked about it, and I've heard him talk about it. Like the the, the advice he's gave him, like lose the round, uh, don't worry about being embarrassed, like because uh, we always see fighters like get dropped and they get like really embarrassed, like from getting dropped. So I was just like, okay, take my time, lose the round, and like regroup. Like I know I'm good. So I know I'm able to recover and come back. Mm-hmm. But the whole thing, I was, like, walking myself through. I actually, like, like watch, it, watch it over and over, like, kind of, like, I could see myself, like, talking to myself. All right, like, let's do this. Let's move this way. Like, I can't move that way. Like, I was kind of, like, feeling myself out, like, this, because my leg hurted. So, like, I was kind of, like, I can't move this way. I can't mm-hmm. move that way. Like, move back this way. I can't, like, I can't roll this way or roll that way. So I just kind of, like, like, basically, like, like check my body out figuring out what you could yeah. and can't which you can and can't do basically yeah so i figured it out and then like then started going and the whole time like this guy's trying to like knock my head off so after the <laughs> fight after the fight he ended up having a broken nose oh shit, oh, shit. so that i guess was, you like, got him back a little bit yeah it was like i got him back but like I, and i kind of like damn like i didn't get the knockout mm-hmm. that was kind of more devastating to me than 
So you didn't get to finish? Yeah, I didn't get to finish because he, he got a knockdown on me. How much of that and all your past experiences do you take to your upcoming fights? Uh, well, most definitely all of them. Because, like, you never know. Like, you're getting prepared for the unseen. Like, mm. I never knew I was going to get dropped in that fight. And you kind of just don't know. And you're going to get dropped. Your leg's going to hurt. Like, it kind of goes to that, like, mental toughness. Like, you got to push through, 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 through things, like, in life. And, like, if you're not, not, if you're not mentally strong, then you easily can collapse, like, mm. in any situation. So, yeah, I take all the experiences. But at the same time, like, I just know, like, like I said earlier, like God don't make mistakes. I know what I'm capable of. I know I could, like, if it's meant to be, like, it's meant to be, like, whether if I win or I lose or, like, if I get dropped or he gets dropped, you know? Because that could have been me on the other side. I could have dropped the guy mm-hmm. and he could have got up and whooped my ass. But he- oh, One big moment, dude, that I, I want to touch on also is uh, your homecoming fight. Uh, we're here at this fight here at the here at the Grizzly Stadium, dude. Um, I'm actually almost here. We're here. <laughs> uh, it, it it was a it obviously it was a big moment because I think that was a that was like your homecoming fight, right? Yes. Uh, okay, can we uh, let's get into that moment, man? Coming home because I feel like the Central Valley bro and the five five nine they really take pride in anybody that comes out of out of the valley, man. Because we all know that it's not the easiest thing to make it out of the valley, and we don't have all the tools. You know, we don't have like the fancy gyms like in L.A. or we don't have like all the people that kind of make the connections a little bit easier to be made. So I feel like uh, everybody from the Valley, man, was definitely rooting for you. I know when you came out of the tunnel, dude, that it, the, the fucking place went crazy, bro. It was, we were going crazy. It was, it, it was a badass <laughs> moment, dude. Yeah. So I just want to hear that, but from your perspective. Okay, so homecoming fight, Fresno, California, October 16th, 2021. Mm-hmm. So I was actually lower on the card, and they moved me up to co-main event. Cause they they kind of like found out like oh shoot, a lot of fans are coming. Yeah, I think there's about like ten k people here. Damn. It was packed out, dude. Yeah, it was it was pretty <laughs> so amazing. Was packed out. Yeah, they were telling me as soon as we got here too, like dude, it was like this. This where is that? The it ring was, sick, was right bro. there. Yeah. It was so lively. It's pretty crazy because like I hear stories like that, and it's kind of like I don't experience that. I just experienced when I fought. Like mm-hmm. I was in the the back getting ready for the whole the whole time. Sure. So. I just get ready, you know, like it's a homecoming fight, you know, like they just everybody's telling me like to stay focused, you know, a lot of pressure, like because like they know, like because like this is the one all your, all home, your friends, all yeah, your family's going to be. You're yeah. going to look at the crowd. You're going to see people, you know, and it's kind of like it could like make you or break you, you know. Mm-hmm. So I was just like mentally preparing for this. And um, I think I went um, the whole thing. Uh, I remember we didn't know where my fourth fight was going to be. And they kind of told us, like, it might be in Fresno. And this was kind of right around the time that my grandma had passed away in June. And this whole time I started to train because they're like, you need to get ready for your next fight. So I was like, I'm going to dedicate to my grandma. I didn't know it was going to be in Fresno. But then it was kind of like a cherry on top for it being on Fresno. I had Nana on the trunks. And that whole time it was kind of like, I'm going to do that fight, you know, dedicated to her. So that that night, main, well, co-main event, and it was kind of like, like unreal surreal uh we're getting ready to like walk out and um it was like it was in the tunnel and i just hear people like chanting my name and it's kind of like oh man like this this is real you know and i kind of just like put on like that little like all right tunnel vision five minutes like i just told myself that tunnel minutes let's be perfect for five minutes that's it that's all i need and i got in there don't really remember much but i got i remember the first punch i hit him I was like, damn, like his head, hurt. his head is hard. Mm. So <laughs> I got in there and um, got him. I think I dropped him once and mm-hmm. then. I think it was in the first round. I, right? I finished him it? in the first round. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I was kind of like, damn, it's over. Like, thank God. Like, it's time to chill now. Mm-hmm. And it was pretty amazing because, like, it, uh, that was a fight to dedicate to my, to my grandma. And I think that guy has never been, like, knocked out. Or, so it's kind of, like, amazing because I actually went in there and knocked him out. In At my home. hometown. Yeah, that's, yeah. So that's That's one of those ones, bro, where I feel like you're not fighting alone. Like, your grandma's there with you, bro, for sure. Yeah, most definitely. You know? Yeah, dude, that, that, that night, dude, it was crazy. Uh, there was, like, a lot of big celebrities here, too, that flew in. Uh, it was a big event, dude. There was a shit ton of people. Nate Diaz was here. Nate Diaz. Tufimo Lopez. Tufimo Lopez. Mm-hmm. Devin Haney. Damon Haney was here. Yeah, yeah it was pretty amazing. Cause, T- uh, Temper from uh, Face, Temper, face Cam was here. Yeah, yeah I, I invited him. Oh, oh did you? Really? Yeah, I invited oh, him. Oh, sick, bro. Uh, <laughs> the, whole, the whole thing about it was kind of like... I fought, you know, like, 
I didn't know Tofimo was here. I didn't know Devin Haney was here. Like all this stuff. Like it was just pretty amazing because Jose Ramirez was here. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like going out there and you're like, like after the fight I seen. Mm -hmm. And like on a show too. Like in the locker room, like I seen like Nate Diaz pass by and I was just like, what the fuck? Like oh shit, he's here. Yeah. Like it was pretty amazing because. How crazy did it get when he got the knockdown? I was sick, bro. Was it? Did everybody get crazy loud and happen? Everyone when he was coming. So you have like an iconic tunnel songs but like every time you come out of the tunnel you have like an iconic entrance as well right you have like the the cowboy hat on you have yeah, we, we had uh sunny side flocorigo like dance mm -hmm. so like that being my high school and them dancing like the whole time like that was pretty good uh my friend isaac torres like he sang he walked me out to the ring and just yeah. just things like that you know like you have to be prepared for that like you want to soak it in but at the same time you need to focus on the mm -hmm. fight that land yeah yeah, yeah, dude, uh, dude, that night was crazy. Like it was, ah, fuck, man, it was. Dude, it, 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 it really was surreal, was bro. In general, but when he dropped them, did it no, go it was wild like, bro, in here? It was sick, yeah. yeah. It was sick. <laughs> yeah, it was. Uh, honestly, I feel like there was like, uh, like he said, it was a co-main event, dude. But the hype was like for mm -hmm. him. Like, People were here for you, bro. Yeah. yeah. No, no disrespect to. I think it was Mikey. Mikey Garcia. Or, Mike Garcia was fighting. Yeah. Right? No disrespect, but like, people were here to see you, bro. Like, yeah, that's <laughs> what a lot of people tell me. But uh, yeah. it was amazing just be co-main event for him. Yeah. Like that like, in itself is badass. Yeah, especially in Fresno, I'm like yeah. grateful. Like if it wasn't for him, like we wouldn't be fighting in Fresno. Mm -hmm. But hopefully one day, main event here in Fresno. Main here, I think it's coming soon, bro. It has to happen. Bro. Yeah, it's 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 definitely coming. Just gotta just gotta keep Cross working, keep grinding. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yep. like be ready for the unexpected. Yeah. How did the um? How did the connection with you and Temper come along, bro? Because that's he's in the gaming industry, face con. That's that's a big industry, and boxing's. Over here to the left, and I know he started yeah. boxing too. So, um, it was before he started boxing, I think. Yeah, yeah, I think at the so, time it wasn't. So, um, you know, probably those days when you hop on Warzone, like Warzone <laughs> days. Yeah. So we we're playing in Warzone. Uh, it was my friend, and he just starts. Um, I die first, of course, you know. <laughs> and then, and then after that, um, I'm in the gulag. Uh, and then I get killed by temper. Oh, sh you he, see the the game th the gamer tag. I didn't see it. I, no? didn't, I didn't really like. No, uh, I'm not. Then my friend's like going crazy. He's like, "You just got killed by temper. You just got that was temper. That was temper." Like he slaughtered me, like annihilated <laughs> me. <laughs> and I was like, "Okay, I and yeah, like, what yeah. am I supposed to do?" <laughs> he's like, "Bro, I'm gonna check if he's streaming." And he wasn't streaming. So eventually, like he's like, "Yeah, that was temper." Like just message him, because I think there was like a. Uh, there was like a, what's it called? A glitcher or somebody like glitching, like was just killing everybody. Mm. So that's, that's why like it was like the game went fast and easy. And I guess, uh, I think he was streaming and he had said something about like uh, somebody was like glitching in the game. Mm -hmm. So like I, my friends, I just messaged him, let him know that he just could in the gulag, like he's in the <laughs> game. Because I, I kind of had like a lot of followers already. Yeah. So I think he messaged me back like, next two three days and he's like keep grinding bro like keep it up you know i was like, all right thank you whatever uh i'd follow him he didn't follow me back but then <laughs> i think like maybe like a two or three weeks later i think after one of my fights yeah he followed me and i was like oh shoot that's yeah, it's so you earned this follow yeah and then i mentioned like that's when i invited him to fresno i was like it's a long shot i don't know if he might come but he did come bro that's sick because Temper's big. That's that's the you know one of the founders of Face Clan. Mm -hmm. I mean, oh yeah, most definitely. And then the next day, which is pretty like crazy too, we actually went to Yosemite. Oh, you, oh, you, oh yeah. you guys, you guys mobbed together? Yeah. Oh, we went to, uh, well, I went. I never been there, and I think he's never been there either. So we both like went for the first time. It's pretty that's amazing, sick, bro. Yeah, pretty that's dope. Cool, yeah. <laughs> we we actually took a picture with him. At, like here. Oh shit! Yeah, yeah, right. We saw him. He walked right in front of our table, and we were yeah. like, oh, "We've always been pretty into gaming, so when we saw yeah. him, we like chased him down. Or, hey, bro, yeah, get a picture quick. Yeah. <laughs> and then like he sent me a like a couple shirts like the next week. That was pretty that's bad. That's sick, bro. Like it was pretty tight. Yeah. I think <laughs> I still have the phase box he sent me. That's sick. Maybe one day phase mark <laughs> mark the boxer. Bro, you're <laughs> on your way, bro. <laughs> I, I I wanted to ask you this, bro. For for there's I, somebody told me to ask you this. I'll be honest with you. Um, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna drop yeah. any names, right? But um, yeah. so when it comes to like like chicks, bro, do you now with your status you have, bro? <laughs> do you, they slide into you, bro? Have you ever had that happen? It, uh, it, like the girls do slide into DMs and stuff. Yeah. Like it's it's not. It's not rare, but like it's kind of. <laughs> it's like not rare. It's not. Rare. Like it <laughs> it's happens all flex. the time. It's not rare. That's the yeah. ultimate flex, bro. It's not rare. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I remember the crazy, <laughs> crazy DM I seen like maybe this week was probably like a girl's like reply to make my toxic ex like jealous. 
And I was like, damn. Like, Did you reply? I, I should have replied, but I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> I should have replied. Yeah. It's like bonus points, but you're not getting Because the bad part, bro, is one of the exes, that might be one of your fans, bro. He might be like a lifelong fan. And yeah, it's pretty <laughs> crazy. Like, yeah. that's where you have to, like, like walk a thin line. Cause, yeah. Like, imagine, like, I don't know who are exes. True. Because, yeah. like, you could be walking into, like. It could be something bad. Yeah, making someone mad or making. The wrong person. Yeah, it's kind of like, you have to be careful because, like, you don't know who's related to who mm. or who knows who. And that's kind of like you have to, like, watch out with the chicks because you don't know, like, <laughs> whose brother is this or who's, who who she knows or, like, yeah. just di- different things like that. Right now you're saying that uh, you had, like, this, this routine, dude, when you were in high school with your phone. Yeah, I didn't get a phone till I was 16. Mm. And that was, uh, I think, junior year. I didn't get a phone till I was 16. And then my dad, um, every time, every night at 10 p.m., every day, weekdays. I would take my phone away and I can get it back at 5 a.m. running six miles. And that was kind of like the life, you know. So you had to run six miles before to get it back. If I wanted to. Yeah. At 5 a.m. Yeah. But like <laughs> there's nothing else you could do at 10. Yeah. But go to sleep. But like even though I try to go to sleep, like you're just in bed and you eventually go to sleep and you wake up and you you get your phone, you yeah. run miles and then you go to school. And it kind of worked out because like I get I wake up, I get to school on time and just things like that, you know. That, and it keeps you in shape but that, too. But it, to put it in context, bro, like that's definitely not like normal. Like oh, that's yeah. definitely like uh like, he was breeding your bro to become a champion. Like mm-hmm. I think that's that's sick. Oh yeah, <laughs> it, for sure. It's kind of like it's not normal, but it's like it's what I'm used to. Yep. Did you ever bump yeah. heads though with that? Because I feel like at that point you're a junior, you know, senior mm-hmm. in high school. Obviously, like there's chicks, there's like a bunch of stuff going on, dude. Like distractions, really. You know what I mean? But um, did you ever bump heads with him because of that? Um, in a sense, I was kind of like more like. It's my dad. Like, it's like, all right. Like, it's what I got to do. Because mm. at the same time, like, I wasn't, um, I wasn't in all the, the scene, like, like Party I would always get, like, that. invited to parties and, like, mm. people like, come on, let's do this. And I'm like, no, like, like, nah, like, I'm not doing that. Like, I, I got to train. I got to do this. I got to do problems. that. And, like, it just, like, never occurred to me, like, to, like, it's like rebel. Because, mm. like, it's not, it's not in me. Because it's like, what would I look like rebelling against? Like, him taking away my phone, like. Like he, this is like it's for the greater good. Yeah, but sick that wasn't you because most of the time I feel like it's not. Most of the time it's the opposite where the kids trying to rebel, trying to go off on this way, and then the dad or you know the, the coach is trying to get him like stay on this path. And I think it's cool that you have that self motivation, bro, to like stay on that path. And I think that's a big part about why you had so much success so far. Exactly. Yeah, mo- jam, most right? definitely it's like the self motivation because like I I know what I got to do. Like I get a good workout in. I don't have to post it. I don't have to like like. I guess like brag about it or like if I do like if I do like I remember one time I ran a marathon just just because see if I could do it mm-hmm. and I did it I didn't post it I didn't do nothing and just just did it well, it was for mm-hmm. you it wasn't for other people too yeah it was kind of like I always hear that persona like you need to be able you need to train this long to run a marathon like and I did it it probably took me like four hours to run a marathon that's pretty good though that's pretty good <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's pretty <laughs> like I saw it I kind of just like forced myself. I ran like, I had a good day at the gym. I ran like six miles out from my house. And I was like, all right, if I run like, I guess, what is it? Like six more miles, like I think eight more miles that way, mm-hmm. I would have to run back. That's the only way back home. So that's what I did. <laughs> that's that's a good way of doing it. I that's ended sick. up by like past Woodward Park, like past Woodward Park. Like I think it was like almost by Copper River. Oh, shit. Damn. That's I deep. come back. Yeah. So like, and I think like the last <laughs> last three miles was like my AirPods just died. So like, I had <laughs> like termination. I had a r- David Goggins round no music. I had to <laughs> rock it out, yeah. Damn, that's, that's the awesome. worst. I'll go to the gym, bro. My AirPods aren't like yeah. on me or whatever. I'm, I'm leaving. I stopped listening <laughs> listen motivational videos. Like I stopped listening to music. I put motivational videos like, so that's like, right. power yeah, I just lives. had to like power through it. I wanted to kind of kick it into gear with like a couple rapid fire questions. Um, as soon as we told a lot of our friends we're going to get you on the podcast today, uh, they had a lot of questions, a lot of different stuff. And um, yeah, I want to kind of get into it before we wrap up real quick. Let's do it. Let's do it. Cool. So one of the biggest ones is uh, your top three all-time boxers on your list, Mark Castro's list. Uh, not in a particular order, but Canelo, Duran, and Chavez. Tish. That's a lineup. Well, and you you lineup. met Canelo. Uh, there was a clip of you meeting Canelo like in person before his fight, right? Yeah, uh, that clip. I didn't actually meet him. I met him like two years before, mm. but he was just congratulating me because mm-hmm. uh, I've I've been I, I I met him already. But I was just kind of like, 
Because he, he gave you, like, words of encouragement telling you he sees what you're doing, right? Yeah. And, like, that night, uh, that's when he fought Billy Joe Sanders and mm-hmm. he, like, broke his or- orbital bone. And I fought that night, too. I got a, I got the fourth round knockout. So just that night, it was just kind of, like, amazing because uh, we're backstage and I was just trying to get a picture with him or just kind of, like, congratulate him. But, like, and then the security guard moved us out, moved us out of the way. And I kind of just, that that night, I had a, I had a Canelo shirt on. Because I, I had my own shirt on, but a fan wanted my shirt. So I kind of told him, like, this is the only shirt I got. Like, like left. He's like, I'll, I'll trade you. <laughs> I told him, I, I seen this Canelo shirt, and we actually traded. And that's I think cool. that's probably one of the biggest reasons, like, I and he, I signed the shirt. That's one of the reasons Canelo seen me, because I had his actual shirt on. And it was, it was a bright red shirt. So I seen him that day, and it was kind of like, it was just amazing to me. Yeah. Cause it's kind of like every val- like he didn't have to come say hi to me. Like I've seen him, I met him. It just like validate everything up up into my career about that. Cause like a Ronaldo coming up to you, like a Messi coming up to you. It's like hey, I see you. Like it's kind of like a, a feeling of high. Like damn, I'm doing something right. Yeah. Cause that's arguably the best boxer right now. Like in our in our time the right face now. Face of boxing. Yeah. Face yeah. of boxing. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, and for him to notice you, bro, know who you are, recognize your work. What what did that mean to you? Oh, I meant the world. It's like validate everything up into my career. Like I'm doing something right. And at the same time, like uh, it was just kind of like, I was just like an unreal feeling. And the whole time I just wanted a picture. And like, I got that moment in front of everybody and it was just special to me. And uh, it was just kind of like, it was just a cherry on top to like the whole, the whole experience. Cause mm-hmm. we're fighters. We never see each other. We just kind of, and I'm a fan, and I'm on the card. Like, I have to focus on my fight. He has to focus on his fight. But I just heard that he was watching my fight. He, like, he was a fan, and that just kind of like, oh, you hear it, but, like, him doing that, he didn't have to, but then he did. And that just shows, like, what kind of uh, person Canelo is. That's sick, yeah. bro. <laughs> that's, like, that's like an all-time, like, bucket list moment, bro. Yeah. And I'm sure you're only going to keep continuing to climb, bro. Like, you're still so early in your career, and I feel like you you made such a big splash in the beginning. And like I said, bro, you're only going to continue to climb. Yeah, it's, yeah, well, definitely. Yeah, <laughs> stay focused. 100%, yeah. bro. So next one is uh, your top all-time boxing moment that you've had so far in your career. When I got the knockout uh, versus Montiel. Uh, which one? Did you say top three? Uh, just top one. Top one, that knockout, getting that knockout right there. And then probably, uh, yeah, that's probably our number one, okay. getting that knockout. What's some advice you would give to younger boxers if they're training right now in the gym, they haven't turned pro yet, or they just haven't had that direction yet or the big break? What's some advice Mark Castro can give the young boxer coming up? Uh, one of the biggest quotes I always tell myself, and, like, I'm going to make it famous, I guess, like, work when nobody's watching and make them watch you. So mm-hmm. just something like that. Like, just kind of, like, work when nobody's watching. And I would, like, like growing up, hearing Kobe stories, like, get up and run at 4 a.m. or get up and do this or get up and do that. Like, just kind of, like, make them watch you. Because, like, and another advice I would give is, like, be different. Like, don't don't try to fit in. Try to, like, don't try to fit in. Because that's always my, that was my issue growing up. I was trying to fit in. But just notice that you're different. Mm. Just be yourself. And, and honestly, when you're yourself, you're you're different. And just embrace your yourself. Don't try to, like, be something you're not. So yeah. always this podcast, we have, like, a signature question we always like to ask and end it out with. Yeah, and so uh, everybody it? Everyone. Yeah. Oh, okay. Everyone it. <laughs> so it's kind of like a situation base, bro. So I want you to put Mark Cash. I want to put want you to put Mark Cash, like, before you turn pro. Or maybe a moment where you really didn't know everything was going to work out, right? Before the 30,000 followers overnight, before the big fights, before the undercard, stuff like that. What's some advice you would give younger Mark Castro just to let you know everything's going to be okay and that you're on the right path? Damn, that's like, I could make it like a deep. Honestly, like, I, I I did like give myself that advice, but like just just keep being true to you. Like, like just keep tr- being true to you. Like don't, don't try to like fake something. Like do everything wholeheartedly. That's what I've always like, like kind of told myself and it kind of like, it kind of like, you can't cheat yourself. Like once you're like not using your heart, like I feel like we're on a path, and once we stop using our heart, we get off that path with God. Mm. So once we come back to that path, we get back on that path. So what I would tell myself, my younger me, just keep being you, and keep the faith, and just just know it's all gonna work out for you, 
and your purpose. And that's why I have I have in my Bible Romans eight eighteen. Um, our our present suffer our present sufferings are 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 great are greater than the the success will be that will be revealed in us. So Damn. it's kind of like it's deep. That yeah, is yeah. deep, bro. That's money, bro. That was one of the uh, I we, like I said we asked everyone that answer, and that was one of my favorite ones, bro. Just because I feel like I I grew up like in really faith based as well, like a faith based family where I went to church on Sundays, Thursdays, went like I was really involved in church as well. Mm-hmm. So my faith was always really strong. So to to hear and to know that your faith is strong as well and like like Nate was saying, that your whole journey that you've been rising up, you've kind of kept your faith the same. And if not even more, bro, like I think it's inspiring to see. And I know like people at home, um, they're probably going to be very inspired as well by all the stuff you mentioned today for sure, bro. God's timing is always like perfect. Like he don't come too soon, too late, but it's just always on time. And it's just, it's just amazing. Cause like mm-hmm. you don't know until like, like, you know, like he tries, yep. he, he reveals it all to you. And like the big thing that God kind of does, I like, he kind of tells you like he reminds you of like what you put you through, hmm. like, like remember when I put you through that? Like remember when I postponed your pro debut for a greater thing? Remember when I postponed uh, your your COVID? And this well, it all turns out for bigger plans for you. That you're reminding you he's never let you down, bro. Yeah, yeah, most definitely. And like the whole time you learn like from not going to the Olympics, that being the thing I wanted to do. Like, he kind of shows you, like, no, like, this is the plan I had for you. Like, this is, you wanted this, but I gave you this because yeah. this was better. Your 100%, purpose. bro. <laughs> like, preaching right now, man. That's good <laughs> shit, yeah. That's good. That's sick, yeah. bro. Well, we appreciate you, bro. I know uh, we're getting kind of close on time, and we appreciate all the time you give us today. And uh, thank you for coming on, bro. And last thing, um, I would say, man, like, you know, one of your goals is to inspire the youth. And I think you already are. Uh, I think you're not only the youth, man, but the whole Central Valley as a whole. Um, I think you are like a really shining beacon for them. And you're already having that impact. And I think that as you grow, man, that impact that you are already having is only going to get bigger, man. So um, well, we, we appreciate you. that, man. And uh, we, we're thankful for, for for you taking the time to be here with us, man. So absolutely. Thank appreciate you. That. Appreciate it. Yeah. All righty, guys. It wraps up today. Make sure to tune in. Make sure to like. Make sure to subscribe. We'll see you on the next one. Good luck to Mark on the next fight. We'll see you in the next pod. Peace. Peace.